This video is brought to you by Throne, Kingdom at War. Fight for glory with millions worldwide and lay claim to what is rightfully yours. What's going on guys, Carmine here, and I just got done watching the last episode of the Game of Thrones. Not the last episode of the series, because we do have the Long Night coming in. Where, where do I even start with this episode? There was a lot of killing time, and a lot of fan service. So, and I gotta say, I did predict Danny's fate to some extent years ago. I always, I always imagined Danny conquering, gr grabbing the throne, and then not wanting it, and just flying off elsewhere, uh, back to Essos, maybe to Old Valyria, and that kind of happened, except she's dead, and apparently Drogon was flying back east as well, so, yeah, but Danny's end, I don't know how I feel about that, I would have liked there to been, I would have liked there to be more of a resolution on that, I, I, her end feels a little unnatural to me, especially considering how rushed this season was. But Jon Snow killing her, I think everybody and their mothers predicted that after last episode. Even if you haven't read the books or haven't caught up with any of the leaks online, I think after last week's episode it was very obvious that that was what was going to happen. But but there was a lot of a lot of wasting time. Did you get, anybody else notice this? A lot of walking around slowly looking at everything, and I kind of understand why they did that. I guess it's for the actors as well as the audience to take one last look at Westeros before the series closes out, which I understand, but at the same time, I would have liked some more screen time for characters who finally come back on screen again after a long absence, like Edmure Tully, Yara, and even uh, Sweet Robin, who is uh, apparently still there. He got tall! That kid grew! God damn! He's probably starting his own basketball team in the Vale. Holy shit, that kid grew. But, um... I felt there was a lot of walking around, a lot of looking around at places that we could have spent more time on figuring out what happens to the rest of the Seven Kingdoms. We know the North has a new queen now, which is Sansa, which ever since season six, we all kind of figured that would happen. Um, but what about the Vale? What happens to the Vale? What about the Iron Islands? There's a new Prince of Dorne that we saw that barely got any speaking, speaking lines. What happens to Dorne? Um, what happens to the Stormlands? Gendry was there, and he barely... I will say, the one thing I like about that Great Council, when Tyrion finally sees everybody there, is that everybody is there. Like, I like that, but I would have liked for everybody to have had more of a say in Bran being elected king. Which, Bran being elected king, I feel is the, the most cop-out decision this show has ever made, ever. Because, no matter who's elected king, people are gonna bitch. Whoever is elected ruler, whether it's Danny, Jon, Sansa, Arya, everybody's going to complain. Bran, however, is the one person I guess you can't complain too much about because no Preston was right when he was telling me the leaks after we did a we did a spoiler episode a couple days ago and Preston was right when he said guess who's going to be the ruler? It's someone nobody hates. And that makes sense. Nobody really hates Bran. Right? I would love for Gendry, you know, Baratheons forever, Gendry to be king, but, you know, whatever. But you're right, nobody really hates Bran. It's, it's, it's the ultimate cop-out response to who sits on the throne. And by the way, calling him Bran the Broken almost sounds like a douche move. Like, I don't know, like... <laughs> king Robert. Robert the Alcoholic. <sighs> uh, but it just sounds like, you know, King Davos. The unread, I mean, I guess, I, whatever. But Tyrion being Hand of the King, Davos being Master of Ships, Brienne being uh, Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, or Lady Commander of the Kingsguard? Um, Podrick being a Kingsguard, Bronn getting Highgarden. I feel like this is... <laughs> Sam being a Grand Maester, which... Um, he didn't even finish his training in Maester School. I feel like this is the most fan fiction fans. This is some fan servicing to the to the extreme. Everybody who's ever watched this show who said, "Yeah, he would make a great this," got that got their wish, which is what I don't. I really don't think that's really what should happen. Um, I'm not saying the fans shouldn't get what they want. But not to the extent that they got it here. That's my problem. Like, Bronn getting Highgarden? Are you fucking for real? I feel like everybody everybody was wanting Bronn to get Highgarden. Or any any place in general. And by the way, I gotta say, when Davos goes, Hey, the Reach is open. Nobody lives there anymore. That's not true. There's a lot of people who live in the Reach still. It's just Highgarden's vacant. But, um... 
No, it's just, I wish more people had more speaking lines. The new Prince of Dorne, Yara, Gendry. Um, there were people at that meeting that I've never seen before. Uh, Sweet Robin barely says anything. Like, I would have loved for there to be more of a dialogue. But the whole Danny becoming the final villain thing, they really weren't subtle about it, and I kind of wish they were. The stuff she was saying to John in the throne room scene, which I gotta say, I haven't done this in a while, but... You may hate Game of Thrones and the writing now, but you gotta admit, there are two things about Thrones that you have to fucking say are masterful. The music and the cinematography. Holy shit, that throne room scene was fantastic. You may not like, you know, the dialogue or what happened in it, that's fine, but the look, the way everything looked, just how beautiful it was shot, oh my god. Absolutely gorgeous. You have to admit that that was fantastic. But John killing Danny, we all saw that coming a mile away. And her saying things like, that were ty uh, tyrannical, is that the right word, tyrannical, am I saying that right, tyrannical, tyrannical, um, her saying things that were very, you know, very, uh, dictator-ish, was really out of left field, like, if these were her thoughts about how the world should be, it should have been said several seasons ago, and in slow doses, so we can actually digest and, 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 and ponder on it. And I gotta say, the one scene I really liked in this episode was when Tyrion and Jon are actually discussing what to do about this situation. Because I felt, as someone who reads his comment section, I've seen that conversation so many times that it almost felt as though the show was just, you know, reading their reading my comment, well, everybody's comment section as well. Like, there is always a debate of whether or not Danny's truly crazy, well, back then, before episode 5, of whether she's right or wrong in what she's doing, and... I like that it was actually discussed here, and I like how there's a like an opposite of what's happening with Tyrion being the fans who are like, yeah, she's crazy, and Jon being the fans who are like, no, no, she's not, and then him stabbing her, ultimately the people going, yeah, I guess so, yeah, she's a little crazy, we gotta put a stop to this. By the way, by the way, rip to all the people who named their children Daenerys. Um, I'm, I'm a part of a YouTube network, and the, the owner of the network named one of his daughters Daenerys, so... Sorry, George. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, um, no, this episode was probably the least worst episode this entire season. If I had to, if I had to rank them, I would say episode two is still my favorite episode. I thought it was great. Um, episode six, the final episode, is the least worst. I would say episode two, one, five, three, and f wait, did I, did I count that right? Hold on, let me. Hold on. Two, one, five. No, wait, wait. Two, one, six, five, three, and four. Okay, there you go. That's that's my list of from good to bad. You know, like I, I would do a tier list, but that's just I don't want to follow the trend. Um, the episode wasn't bad. I, I really need to watch it again and gather my thoughts. That ending, though, I wasn't a fan of that ending that much. I so. When we did do our spoiler discussion a couple days ago uh, on the podcast, um, uh, Preston did tell me there was an ending that was was in there where Tormund and Jon go beyond the wall and they find the symbols that the, that the White Walkers love putting around. You know those like weird like symbols that we've seen from like the first episode until like, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, the symbols that the White Walkers love to arrange human bodies in. Supposedly, the ending was that Tormund and Jon would go beyond the wall, ranging, and they would find that, and that's how the series would end. Which, I was actually super excited, and I thought they were gonna do it, but they... they didn't! They didn't do it! And I'm so annoyed that they didn't do it, because that would have been a perfect end to this entire show. Jon spent a good chunk of his life fighting this war against the dead, only to find out that, yeah, it's not over. It is not over in the slightest, and that is the, the destructive cursed cycle of Westeros to constantly repeat this this battle of life versus versus the dead. I would have loved that ending, but they didn't do it. They left it am ambiguous with Jon going off beyond the wall with the wildlings. I don't know. I wasn't a fan of that. I, I, I don't mind Sansa being Queen of the North, and I don't mind Arya going off to uh, what's west of Westeros. Um, which I gotta say, though, there's one scene that made me roll my eyes so fucking hard more so than I ever have in any episode of Game of Thrones ever. Any scene of Game of Thrones ever. And that's when Arya... Like, Jon is, you know, Danny's victorious, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, Jon and Danny have a brief little 
thing, and she walks off, and John's looking at her. He's like, oh, no, what, what's happening? And all of a sudden, the camera pans over. Arya's right next to him. Like, what was that? You're Batman now? I knew you were part of the Avengers initiative, but you're Batman now, too. <laughs> wow. What, you got through all those Dothraki and Unsullied to just <laughs> land right next to him. That is just, please go away and never come back. Please, just go. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Um, but no, my, my ultimate issue with this episode is that it wasn't that bad. It was just a lot of time killing and a lot of fan service. And I don't know how, how I feel about the fan service. Once again, I'll have to rewatch the, the episode uh, again and again just to kind of solidify my feelings on it. But I wasn't a big fan. Like, everybody gets exactly what they want. It's almost like every casual viewer of the show that had, like, a checklist of what they wanted to happen had that happen. And I don't think that's what's going to happen in the books. Not everybody's going to get what they want, you know? Davos is not going to be Master of Ships because I guess ships is his specialty. Bronn is likely not going to get Highgarden or any major castle or stronghold for that matter. Brienne, who, you know, came into the uh, uh, the series as a, a Kingsguard for Renly, I doubt she's going to end up as Kingsguard again, you know? And um, who else was in there? Uh, Sam being Grand Mate. He didn't even finish his fucking schooling! Are you kidding me? <sighs> oh, well. Season 6, once again, I've said this before. Season 6, season 8. Once again, I've said this before. I'll say it again. The show has not been good since season 6. I knew, I knew this stuff was coming. I expected it. I try to have a bit of optimism, you know, for the sea. You, you can't blame me. I, you can't sit there and, and blame me. Carmine, stop defending. I'm not defending the show. I'm just saying that... I'm not going to sit here and hate everything that's on screen because some stuff are cool. But this episode really, the fin the final episode of Game of Thrones, I feel as though, did not deliver on a lot of things that I wanted it to deliver on. And if we had more episodes, as always, um, I feel as though it would have been better. Though, I guess, and at the end of the day, it had to end. And even though most of us who are kind of annoyed and upset, we didn't get what we wanted, at least... Some of the casual show fans got what they wanted, so so it's whatever. At least, uh, you know, it's a glass half full type of situations for some fans. And before we wrap this up, I want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Throne Kingdom at War. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, then you'll love this free-to-play strategy game that challenges you to rise up, call your banners, and take control of the ultimate seat of power. Whether it's customizing your hero to lead the charge, building up your castles and towns, or taking the fight to your enemies, there's never a dull moment here. And if you're a fan of those old-timey RPG and strategy games from the 90s like Final Fantasy or even Diablo, then you'll feel right at home here. It's free to play right now, and if you're not in the habit of downloading anything to your phone or tablet, they've got you covered. You can take up the fight online through your web browser, and because of that, there's nothing to patch or install or any other hassle. Play the way you want with millions of other players. I'll leave a link in the description below. Definitely check them out. It'll really help out the channel. But most importantly, get on there and claim what is rightfully yours. Well, guys, that is it. Thank you so much for joining me for this first reaction, impression, video, whatever that I started doing a while ago. Um, as always, let me know what you thought of the episode. I'm sure a majority of you will hate on it. But if you did, if you can find something about it that you did like, please let me know. What did you think about, you know, the small council being filled with uh, all your favorite secondary characters? Uh, what did you think about Jon Snow's ending? And who, who do you think should really sit on the Iron Throne or, or be the main monarch? Since the Iron Throne is no more. Which, by the way, that was so dumb. He burns it and then he fly. I'll save it for my review. Save it for my review. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. As always, I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.